Welcome back everyone to the eCore Academy eLearning platform. My name is AJ Raj, back with yet another video for you all, and today we're going to be looking at graphing linear equations. Before we get into today's video, please make sure to do four things. Make sure to smash that subscribe button, hit that like button, turn on post notifications, and leave a comment down below. All four of those things, of those things are very greatly appreciated. We do obviously tend to, um, we obviously do tend uh, for our feedback. Um, we really do care about all the feedback that you have to give us, any future suggestions for videos um, that's all very much appreciated um, so please leave those comments down below or you can email us too if you want to reach out to us privately our email will be at the end of the video so as I was saying today we're going to be looking at graphing specifically uh, all three linear forms of the linear equations that we learned previously uh, throughout this unit this linear equations unit so we're going to be looking at how to graph those three uh, forms which will also uh, help you uh, essentially uh, revise upon um, and also help you remember, recall. Um, it's a very good review, this entire lesson. It helps you realize um, and also take a, take back some of those skills that you previously learned when uh, dealing with these various different linear equations, these different forms. And now I'm going to be showing you how to advance that step and learning how to graph them. So the overview of today's lesson, how to graph linear equations. So in this lesson, we'll be graphing linear equations in the three main forms. These three main forms include y-intercept, your slope-intercept, your standard, and your point-slope form. Each of these processes involves taking data from the equations and then referring, to the, referring them to essentially points that exist on the line. And then after you have a certain amount of points, you will graph the line. So when it comes to the amount of points that you need, taking it from that equation, taking valid points, essentially valid answer sets from that uh, equation, you will always need a minimum of two points graphed on your graph uh, before you can actually create a line. Uh, obviously, you cannot have one uh, simple uh, point. You don't have any direction when you're doing so, but two points does suffice for proper direction in creating your line. Sometimes your teachers might require three. It depends on what's being asked for. But in this lesson, we're specifically focusing on discovering two. And you can use all three equations to create a graph and vice versa. You can also use the graph to create the equation. Now, when it comes to the minimum amount of points, uh, obviously, when we're calculating for two, uh, the manner in which we calculate for two, you can always find new points with the already existing points on the line. So there's no need to worry about that. So in this case, we're going to be looking at the y-intercept form, our first form, which is also known as the slope-intercept form. So graphing y-intercept form or slope-intercept form. So we're given in this equation in slope-intercept form of y equals negative two-thirds x plus three. Obviously, y on the left-hand side in the middle, uh, uh, sorry, on the right-hand side, we have our mx, our slope being negative two-thirds, our x-coordinate, and then adding three, that's going to be our y-intercept. So we're first going to create our graph here. So the first thing that we want to do, obviously, one point that's automatically given on your slope-intercept, your y-intercept form, uh, uh, equation is always your y-intercept. That's essentially what the equation is derived from, not only just the slope, but also that y-intercept. And our y-intercept is always that little extension here, plus three. So that's going to be the plus three, the positive three is going to be our y-value. And obviously, if it's a y-intercept, it's going to be a zero, comma, whatever that value is, because it's on the y-axis, where the equation, in where the line intersects the uh, y-axis. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to plot that point. And that's going to be 0, 3, because obviously the y coordinate is 3, um, and x has to equal 0. So once we've created our first point, our first point of reference, now we can merely utilize our slope here. So we're going to calculate a second point here. We know that our slope is negative 2 thirds. Remember, that's rise over run. So our rise is going to be negative 2, so we're going down 2, essentially. And then, of course, we're going over 3. So essentially, we're going down two units in this case. So let me write this out. So we're going down two units here, two units. And then we're going over three units because it's our x value, three. We're going over three units. So when you're doing so, you're going down two units and then over three units in this case. You'll get that we're at the point three comma one in this case. So three comma one is our, uh, our, our new point here, our given point here, because we went uh, obviously down two points. Uh, so that's going to put us at 1 for our y-axis, and then we went over, right over 3 points, so that's going to be 3, comma 1. So now that we've created those two points, we can now draw out our graph. 
So we've just graphed our graph here. We have our two points, and now we can just merely write, draw our graph that cleanly intersects two points, and that'll actually be an accurate graph, an accurate representation of y equals negative two-thirds x plus three in graphic form. Now let's take a look at the point-slope form. So graphing point-slope form. We're given this equation, y minus three equals two times x minus four. Remember, point-slope form is written in the form of y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So that y1 here, that negative three, is going to be the essentially the y coordinate, y coordinate of any of the given point that identifies this equation. And then of course negative four is the x coordinate of the point. This is literally derived off of a single coordinate pair, and then two is going to be your slope. So the first thing that we want to do is we're trying to start off the easiest way. We're trying to calculate with points that are already given in the equation. Well, we know that this is derived off of the equation y1, x1 comma y1. And we know that the coordinates are here, negative three being the y coordinate of the uh, coordinate pair and negative four being the x coordinate of the coordinate pair used as reference for this equation. So what we're gonna do here is we're merely gonna start off with that point here. So this is gonna be our point here, negative four comma negative three. Obviously this is our negative four here, our x1. And then this is our negative three, our y1. So that essentially creates negative four comma negative three in terms of our x1 and our y1 coordinates. So once we've done that, the next thing that we're gonna do is, another sweet thing about this equation is because is that it literally gives us m, our slope. So we can calculate rise over run. So a slope of two means you have a rise of two, you're going up two, and you have a, a, a essentially a run of one, so you're going right one in this case. So you'd go up two and essentially over one in order to get to this point here. So up two and over one to the next point, and that would be negative three comma negative one. You went up two essentially. So negative three turns into negative one, you're adding two. And then of course you went right one. So negative four plus one is negative three. And now that you have your two points, obviously we can now graph our line. So that's official representation of this given equation. And lastly, now let's take a look at standard form. So how do you graph standard form from equation to the graph? So we're given this equation, 2x plus 2y equals 4, written in the form of ax plus by equals c. c is 4, it's our constant term here. And then obviously 2x and 2y, those are the uh, constants that are being multiplied to the respective uh, variables, x and y. a being 2 and also b also 2 multiplied to y. So let's create our graph here first. So remember, the way that you actually calculate to make a line here with standard form is, and the easiest way to calculate points is that standard form always provides the x and y intercepts. That's when x intercept is when y equals zero, essentially, and vice versa. When your x equals zero, then your y intercept is the given value when you do so. So the first thing that we're going to do here is we're going to calculate for our x intercept. So when y equals zero, what is x, essentially? So we take 2x. And we're going to plug in zero for y. Where does the, essentially, where does this graph intersect the x-axis is what we're looking for. So that means that y has to be zero. So 2x plus 2 times zero equals four. We know that two times zero is zero. So that's 2x equals four. That means that x equals two. If x equals two and obviously y equals zero in this case, our x-intercept is going to be uh, two comma zero. And then obviously if we did the opposite here on this side, we calculated for a y-intercept essentially where the graph intersects the y-axis, we need to set our x to zero and obviously our y, we're calculating four, two times zero is zero. So now we're left with two y equals four. And that means that y equals two. So our y-intercept is gonna be two comma zero. So now that we have two points here, our x, our y-intercept here, oh, sorry, I apologize, zero comma two. Now that we have our y-intercept 0, 2 and our x-intercept 2, 0, we can also plot both of those points here. So our x-intercept 0, 2 and then our y-intercept 2, 0, sorry, our x-intercept 2, 0 and our y-intercept 0, 2. We've plotted both of those points. Now we can simply graph our line that intersects both of those points cleanly. So this is the representation of 2x plus 2y equals 4 as a fair graph. All right, and now our, for our last slide, 
Uh, we've just finished graphing all of the properties, but I just wanted to throw out there that not only can you just merely shift from your equational format to your graphing format, and now that now that you've learned that, you can actually identify that it's reversible. So you can find equations from graphs, essentially. You can take a graph, any given graph, and you can, with the access to any of its points, obviously at minimum two points, you can create your equation. Now, in terms of what exactly you need in order to create each of those linear equations by looking at a graph, doing the opposite of what we've been doing. Uh, for the slope-intercept form, you would need to calculate for the y-intercept. You need to know what the y-intercept point is on that graph. And after finding out the y-intercept, you need another point on the graph to calculate what the slope is. So once you've calculated the slope, that rise over the run with any other point and the y-intercept, you can identify what the equation is. Then for point slope form, you just need one point on the graph, and then of course, any other point on that graph to refer to that point uh, in order to calculate the slope, and you can plug in those, uh, those variables into your equation. And finally, for standard form, all you need is your x and your y intercepts, and then you'd create your official equation. Um, so once you create that equation, uh, you would also be able to you would also have to calculate for your constant uh, by plugging in values for your x and your y to see which uh, what, what constant would work for those values. Uh, just like you did there when you set your y equal to 0 and then you multiply 2 times your x, you would have to calculate what your x-intercept and your y-intercept would be. And then that way you can calculate what your c, your constant, would be. All right, everyone. I hope you all enjoyed this video. This has been the eCore Academy eLearning platform. Please make sure to like and subscribe down below and make sure to turn on post notifications. Also, feel free to leave a comment down below as well. Please check out our website at www.ecoreacademy.org and email us at ecoreacademy at gmail.com if you have any questions. And feel free to check out all of our social media in the description box down below at Pinterest, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. See what kind of interesting content we have out there and use those mediums to share all of our videos. Once again, I hope you all enjoyed this video. This has been AJ Raj, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.